So perfect. We'll just launch right into it. Could I have you actually introduce yourself to our audience? Mm-hmm. Uh, just my name. Yeah. I mean, unless Lily, you want to give a little tidbit about what you're up to, what who you are. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jake Westy Rogers, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and storyteller. Perfect. So before we get into your current releases and what you're doing right now, I'd love to kind of just go back to the beginning a little bit and, you know, have you just start with like where you, when you started pursuing music and what that was like. Yeah, um, I grew up in Missouri in the Bible Belt, um, but I was always around music and my mom worked in radio, so I went to a lot of concerts when I was little and I had a lot of energy so my parents put me into theater <laughs> and that's kind of when I fell in love with performing when I was really really young um, and then in middle school I was obsessed with Lady Gaga and Adele and Regina Spector and this kind of just like powerful songwriter voices and that's when I started writing when I was like 12 or 13 and, um, kind of became addicted to it since then and haven't stopped <laughs> so it's kind of how I got into it I love that I also loved Adele and Lady Gaga growing up for sure yeah. like two inspirations and they're yes. still going still so it. strong <laughs> yeah like still probably more yeah. obsessed now honestly mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. But yeah, going off of that, just um, getting more into just your childhood and, you know, bringing in who you are in your lyric writing. I mean, you said you started really young, but what was it like, you know, coming out in M Missouri and then also pursuing music? Did you see that as like an outlet to help you express yourself? Yeah, it was always kind of my safe place. Um, at least when I was creating, you know, I was I was writing a lot more free than I was talking in my real life. Um, and even though I wasn't really out to a lot of people, like there was something about putting putting everything into art and then performing it where I just felt safe doing it. So I think that sort of saved me in a lot of ways. Um, just feeling free, at least in some space, was really empowering. Um, and helpful, especially like where I was. Um, and I think, I don't know, and I, I mean, music still, even though I'm like out and whatever, I don't really have many secrets. Music is still like, still sort of my barometer for like what's actually going on below and it will usually precede my actual living so like <laughs> like writing a breakup song a year before breaking up with someone <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> for instance um <laughs> where i'm like where did that come from do i feel that and then a year later i'm like oh i guess i felt that i just wasn't allowing myself to feel that yet so but those are getting closer i feel like my songs and my feelings are uh the gap is is getting closer as i become i feel like more authentic authentic in my day-to-day -day life because music is cathartic but it's not necessarily healing you know you still have to do the work um it feels really good but I think there's still an aspect of like living the truth too that's that's important for me to learn absolutely and I love what you said just about putting yourself in these songs and like I don't want to say too much about this like I don't know personally but I really feel like your new song and your new EP like with Pluto um it just felt really really personal to me like I had listened to some of your other music and I felt like when I was listening to this one I just really the lyrics really resonated with me so could you speak about the inspiration for this EP thank you yeah um I think I was well, the idea of Pluto, I was really inspired by. I was kind of obsessed with the idea of Pluto for like a while, um, specifically in astrology, because I was like, I found out that like anyone born in like 1995 to 2008, like our Pluto is in Sagittarius. And I thought that was really interesting because it's like a generational marker. And I remember I like walked into your writing session and I was like, Pluto and Sagittarius. And like, I don't think we can make a song called Pluto and Sagittarius. It's kind of a mouthful. But Pluto is really cool. And then I like just really, I, I really attach myself to the idea of like the outsider 
um, specifically in like romantic relationships. And I feel like that's a lot of the songs is kind of just me asking myself in the relationship I was in and the patterns of relationships I've been in, like, am I gonna continue suffering? Am I gonna continue um, putting myself in these situations where I'm not happy with someone else? Like, is love gonna kill me in a way or is it going to heal me? Um, and I feel like each song is kind of like me exploring a different facet of that. And and I, a lot of it was about like, just like my family and generational ideas and like looking at like my grandparents and my parents and their love and like comparing it to my love and wanting to sort of, you know, make my own version of love and transcend the ideas that I've been taught. Not that they're bad, but just kind of like breaking free from, uh, from my upbringing in a way. Um, and it's really painful to do that, I've found, but the songs kind of helped me get there. Um, so yeah, they definitely got pretty personal, you know, um, but I also don't feel like I have any choice, you know, I feel like I have to make stuff that's real or else why am I doing it? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I think that resonates with a lot of people. And when they hear that your music, like, I think that's definitely communicated. Um, so you recently were signed with a record label just in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. So how has it been going from, you know, being an independent and then now working and, you know, working with a team and creating new music there? Honestly, like I feel creatively not much has changed, you know, like I'm, I'm still making the songs and still kind of leading the, the visuals and all that. The, the biggest difference is just having the support behind it and having kind of a full team to help me actualize these ideas. Where like before, like my self-release EP, spiritual, like those music, like the Jacob from the Bible music video, we literally have like $14, you know? <laughs> and you make that work. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And I, 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 I always believe that, um, you know, it makes you more creative when you have to think outside the box. Um, so I think the biggest difference now is just kind of, you know, having a team that believes in me and allows me to really like spread my wings and, and make the art I want to make is really huge. Um, and I don't take that for granted because it's pretty recent that like a major label artist would even be able to like be this open and out and free in their art. <laughs> Um, and make music videos that are explicitly queer and stuff like that. So it's cool. And I'm quite happy with, with how it's going. <laughs> Absolutely. I definitely see it on the up and up and I'm so excited. I keep talking to new queer artists and it's great to just kind of see, you know, slowly the industry morphing and becoming more accepted to it. And just, you know, putting even just like he pronouns in a song can be a crazy time so yeah it's been amazing just being able to see that and see that in your songs as well mm. um it's magical it's yes so refreshing. yeah <laughs> and speaking of magical I wanted to kind of just bring up you know you recently spoke with Elton John on his podcast <laughs> and that just seems crazy so how is that experience for you <laughs> that's magical <laughs> it is magical in, I think so I don't know how it, I don't know what happened <laughs> Um, it, it, it's, it's obviously surreal. I mean, I actually don't even think it's hit me and that was in July. So I could very well wake up next month and have a heart attack because of it. Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot of imposter syndrome. Um, I, you know, I feel like I've worked really hard to kind of just like believe in myself and do that. But it was one of the first times where I was like, oh, if Elton John likes me, I must not be like bad. <laughs> which it was, it was just like a, a just a good feeling and also to know that like even on like a, a deeper level like you know what he represents as kind of this queer icon to all of us you know to have that north star in the sky and then you know I was very happy being a bi casual bystander that Elton John did not know of you know like I was I was I was I was I was very happy in that place so it kind of threw me through a loop for a second but 
come back to gratitude and um, it's just cool. It's magical. It is. And then, you know, speaking of other artists, if you could do a dream collaboration, who do you think you'd want to work with? Oh, Florence and the Machine. I'm manifesting that today. That's happening. Right now, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Totally, Florence, if you're watching, I have a song you think you like. <laughs> I literally dye my hair red, like, because of her. So, um, yeah, yeah. It looks great. I've seen, Thank yeah. <laughs> so we kind of mentioned it just at the beginning that you had a recent show, but what's it like, you know, being out on the stage again and performing live? Oh my God, it's like my favorite place in the whole world and I think like you know being able to perform again um, even though there's still restrictions and you know we still need to be masked and, and vast, vaccinated and it's still just freeing to be in a room with music and it feels like like I just I, I took it for granted and to be able to come back with like these new songs and to have people like know them and be able to like sell out venues like I was not doing that before the pandemic so it's very surreal um very cathartic for me and I can't wait to do many 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 more <laughs> what is your favorite part about performing live I just love frolicking around like a little four-year-old kid like that's so fun and I love that I can you know like do costume changes and like all these things that like I wanted to do and you know like seeing Lady Gaga when I was in like middle school like that kind of stuff and then like being able to do that now and like creatively direct these moments and but I also love the really intimate moments in the shows, you know, it's fun to do the big songs, but the moments where I'm kind of at piano and just able to like tell a story and then sing a song is really special. So all of it really. <laughs> yeah, I love your show presence. I've seen some of your live shows on YouTube. Obviously, I haven't been able to in person yet but I love the personality that you bring to it and you know with frolicking I feel like my favorite part about doing going to concerts is also frolicking because it's just that time yes. where you don't have to worry about how you dance like no one cares because you're nobody just all cares jumping and it's yeah. accepted um but you're it's gonna also yes yes the four-year-old jumping around is absolutely yeah. accurate about yeah. that <laughs> and then you're going to be touring with Ben Platt next year so how exciting are you for that um I, I can't even put that into words because we're you know we're playing some of like the best venues in the world so uh I have no comment I'm just know that I'm excited <laughs> seems like this whole interview is just kind of like there's a lot of surreal things going on we're just gonna let them happen because that's all I, I can I, handle I do disassociate sometimes because of it but I'm really trying to come into my body <laughs> and be grateful for these things and I yeah, like I just, I'm you know it's like the past three months have been so life-changing and um I'm, I'm just so grateful really that um I I get to do this every day and I get to make music and share it and that's literally the dream so for the Ben Platt tour to be able to you know play in these like arenas and stuff and share share my music it's it's such an honor and just the last question to wrap it up I mean going back to your new EP what do you hope people take away from hearing it I hope they take away um more of themselves into themselves not taking away from themselves but I, I hope they you know find new pieces about themselves within these songs um because I think that's that's the point of that's the point of me being so honest with my music is to allow other people to be honest with themselves and connect in that vulnerable place um because that's what my favorite music has done for me so that's all I hope. I hope it's a little a little friend if you're feeling alone or whatever you're feeling, just to celebrate whatever emotion that might be. 
Well, thank you so much for chatting with me and congratulations on your EP and good luck with your tour. I'm very excited for all thank that's to come too. for you. Yeah, absolutely. So Have a good day. You too. Like this video? Follow us for more.